player reactivity, that's the hallmark of a great role-playing game. And the more the world reacts to what you're doing, the more immersive it becomes, the more again, it feels like you're being watched for everything you do. So we've tried really, really hard to make sure we're telegraphing the choices you make and the people are reacting to that. Oftentimes they're kind of subtle. People would have to play a game two or three times and go, hey, they really thought of that. So I think making sure that we're telegraphing that reactivity to what you're doing is the most important thing. And I think this is probably the most nested edge case reactivity of any of the Wasteland series that we've done. Wasteland 3 continues the tradition of Wasteland 2 in giving the players difficult choices. Uh, both personal and political. Um, personal choices such as there's a scene where there's a gun on the mantelpiece of these poor people's homes and it's very sentimental because it was their son's gun and he passed, but it's a really, really nice gun. So you could take it but you would have to kill this nice couple. Murdered him for some shitty gun. And what's interesting is most people won't do it. it they, they, they won't make these virtual characters unhappy or kill them because they feel bad about it. And that's what I love about these games. You have hundreds of decisions, sometimes thousands of decisions that are all have to play nice with each other. And you have multiple writers over multiple areas writing stories individually, you have to ride herd on all of those people to make sure that everything they do ties up to everything everybody else is doing and also supports the, the main story. I think the most difficult part about designing for the Wasteline universe is the player choice that they have. We let them do so many things, but we still need to keep a cohesive story together. So simple things, which is you can pull out your gun and shoot anybody you want in the game. Well, what happens with that? You know, there are quest givers. Well, you kill the quest giver, now how are you gonna get to the next thing? And then how is the uh, world gonna respond to what you've done? Because the more edge cases we put in, that we write for, that you try, the more immersive and the greater the payoff. Uh, we love it when people try really obscure things and we recognize it and the world pays that off. That's a great feeling whenever that happens. And so I think writing for all the edge cases and creating all the content that you have to in order to make it truly effective, you end up writing 30% more than you would that you're gonna use that the player's ever gonna see. Uh, otherwise, it's we would have the same experience. So creating all that extra content, knowing most people won't see it, but they might see it, is a big challenge of doing one of these games. Wasteland 3 kind of prides itself on not punishing people for making terrible or questionable moral decisions. Like if you wanna take Vic the Psycho in your party, okay, you can do that. If you want to shoot everybody in the game, we'll let you do that. What we try to do is make sure that when you do these things, even if you're not punished, you see the consequences. I declare them enemies of the state. If you decide to kill some refugees, you're going to see a weeping mother or a lost child, and you're going to understand that what you did has consequences for people in the world. We do have the choices they make ripple through long periods of time. And there's nothing better than when you made an early decision and then later on somebody's commenting on it. We have a simple device where we have we have a paper boy. He's just in town and he's always sort of yelling out whatever's going on in the world. Cowardly attack on Colorado Springs. And so as you run around and let's say you you, you you blew up the bazaar, he's yelling up, bazaar, burn to the ground, read all about it. And right, so every time you go by him, you're him shouting out what the rangers are doing. That's like a small example of a choice and consequence. But again, the world is always watching you, always reacting at different times. Okay, hot it is fun designing dark outcomes for player choices, but dark outcomes can't be the only out outcomes. Uh, players 
have to be able to find some light and some balance and sometimes funny outcomes, um, sometimes pathetic outcomes, sometimes heartwarming outcomes, because when you finish the game, you don't want to be, oh man, that was rough. Sometimes you do. There are endings that you can choose that will get you that, but if you get that ending, you made that ending because you made those choices. What we try to do is we try to not surprise the player with, you know, if, oh, I'm going to do a good thing and a terrible thing happens. You reap what you sow. We're super proud of, of the way Wasteland 3 has come out. Um, you know, we, we sit there playing on ourselves and, and again, we have, we have teams of writers playing this thing. So we, we play it through it to some degree as a user would. Like, I don't know everything that's been written. And we sit in the conference room when we play it several times a week and we just go through and we're just laughing or enjoying the, or, or getting these decisions like, oh, what do we do here, you know? And so it's been great to experience it how the users will, and I can't wait to get it in people's hands. Blood of 